Welcome to the Free Library of Philadelphia. I'm Andy Cahan, Director of Author Events. Imagine that you've played eight seasons with the Philadelphia Eagles, that you were a two-time Pro Bowl running back, and you were named first team All-Pro, and then led the league with over 2,000 yards from scrimmage. Imagine you're one of the best ball players in the National Football League. What do you do next? Well, our guest today, Brian Westbrook Sr., decided to write a children's book with a well-known TV broadcaster, anchor reporter, and University of Pennsylvania graduate and mom, Leslie Van Arstall. Along with illustrator and artist, Mr. Tom, they created the book, The Mouse Who Played Football, and they're here to tell you all about it. Please welcome Leslie Van Arstall and Brian Westbrook Sr. to the stage. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> thank you guys so much for coming out. And we'd also like to thank Temple University Press for making this all possible. So thank yes, you. Thank you. We're gonna, what we're gonna do right now is read the book, read a little bit of the book, just not to give the whole thing away, and then talk to Brian about his process, and then open it up to questions, if that's good with everybody. Leslie, before we read the book, can yeah. we, do we have any Eagles fans here? Okay, all right. I thought I was, I was parking my car, and the lady, young lady outside told me that, first she said, can I get a picture? I said, absolutely, you can get a picture. So I'm taking a picture as I put my arm around her and the other young lady are taking a picture. She said, just so you know, I'm a Dallas fan. Oh. <laughs> and so I took my arm away from her and I did not take that picture. So are you a Dallas fan back there? Oh, okay, okay. I was about to <laughs> no, say, no, we were no. having a problem. Uh, well, 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 thank you guys so much for being here. We appreciate it. We, we love all the Eagles fans. Um, this is something special for us. Yeah. It's a special opportunity for us. We're super excited to be here. Two years in the making. Two years in the making. So we'll talk a little bit more yes. about that, but we'll read a little bit of the book. All right. No one was thinking about football on the day the mouse, Brian the Mouse was born. Instead, they were focused on the tiny little furball who had just entered the world. His parents were incredibly proud. His doctor, however, was a bit worried. Too small, tough little fella, but I'm not sure he has what it takes. But as time passed, Brian would surprise everyone. He was strong, he was healthy, he just happened to be a little smaller than everyone else. Sure enough, by the time Brian started first grade, he was the smallest mouse in Mouseland Elementary. On his very first day of school, he was a bit nervous, but very excited, and he had many questions for his new teacher, Miss Pinktail. But every time Brian raised his hand to ask something, the teacher couldn't even see him. He was stuck sitting behind much bigger mice. The little mouse sighed, hoping school wasn't going to be a big problem. Luckily, being small never really bothered Brian, even though it did seem to bother other people. His gym teacher, Mr. Whiskerberry, took one look at him as he was setting up a game of dodgeball and said, too small, tough little fella, but I'm not sure he has what it takes. Brian just smiled. Then he beat everyone in dodgeball, even Mr. Whiskerberry. When Brian got to middle school, he was still smaller than everyone else. So that made things a bit difficult when he decided to try out for the football team. On the very first day of practice, it was time to pick out his shiny new helmet and pads. Brian was so excited. And the book goes on from there. It's, it's a really good finish to the book. And I'm glad that you all have a copy to enjoy. And I want you all to take a minute when you get home to read the rest of it. I'm super excited. Of about it, and so thank you so much. Um, and, and I guess, of course, you can see that where the book is kind of going yes. right now, and the message. You know, some may perceive his weakness as being small, but it's actually his strength. And do you want to talk a little bit more about the message? Yeah. Well, you, even as you saw at the beginning of the book, and even now, I'm still small. Um, I just remember uh, going to high school, my first day of high school, and seeing all the different guys, and we walked into the gym, me, my mom, and my mm -hmm. dad. And my mom said, is this a football team? She said, yeah. Um, he said, is this the varsity team? They said, no, this is, the, this is the freshman team. Your son's gonna be playing with these boys. <laughs> and my mom said, she pulled me right out of the gym and said, baby, you can't play with these guys. They're way too big for you. <laughs> and so throughout my life, a lot of people said that you can't do this. You're not big enough. You're not strong enough. You're not fast enough. Has anybody ever been doubted before? Any of you guys ever been doubted before? Has anyone ever said, you're not big enough, you're not strong enough, you're not fast enough to do something? Well, I don't believe that. 
Leslie and I, we don't believe that at all. We believe that we write our own destiny. Amen. We believe that the things that you will achieve in your life are the things that you work hard to achieve, that you dedicate yourself to, and that you sacrifice for. And in this book, you'll see a lot of that. And that's one of the reasons why we wrote this book. Absolutely. And, you know, you'd think by the time, and he has, Brian has so many stories that he could tell, but you'd think by the time you got to your senior year of college, he's breaking records left and right at Villanova, you know, goes on to be this featured running back at the Philadelphia Eagles. It was still hard, even at the senior bowl, he goes, yeah. to, it, you still had to fight. Yeah, so at Villanova, I played my freshman year, did, did well, played my second year, was an All-American. My third year, I tore my ACL. Um, and and I, it's funny that I say that because back before that, in my senior year of high school, I tore my ACL again, right? So before I tore my ACL in, in at college, I tore my ACL in high school in 1996. And so that's how I ended up at Villanova, adversity. Has anybody ever had struggles in their life sometimes, things that you just got to get over to get where you want to go? Yeah. Same thing for me, right? Same thing for me. Uh, same thing for all of us. All of us will have some adversity, some hurdles at some point. And so those were some of the adversities I had. But we go back to college. I was an All-American, really good player. Uh, won the Walter Payton Award, which is the award for um, 1AA is the best player in the country, almost the equivalent of the Heisman um, in 1AA football. And so then I go to the Senior Bowl. And the Senior Bowl really is an all-star game for all the seniors in the country. So you're playing against Miami students, Florida State, Ohio State, all the different big schools in the country. And so I go to this Senior Bowl, and I'm practicing all week long. We're being coached by the Seattle Seahawks staff. And right before the game, the running back coach comes to me and said, listen, um, just so you know, we're only going to play you on third downs and on special teams. Because people in the NFL, uh, they already know you're only going to be a third down back and a special teamer. And I was like, excuse me? This is an all-star game. I want to play so that I can prove how, how, how good of a player I am. He said, no, no, no. Um, you're only going to be a third down back and, run, uh, and, and a special teams guy. And so that was another opportunity that someone tried to limit me. And again, our message is to our children, to everyone here, no one can limit you except for yourself. No one can limit you except for yourself. So true. You know, and uh, gosh, kids, Brian has three beautiful kids. His family's here today, you know, and we wanted to do this for kids to get that positive message out. But Brian had the idea to take this one step further in terms of giving back. If you yeah. want to talk about that a little bit. You know, when, when Leslie first came to me with the book, and it's funny because back in the day, I'm 42 now, mm -hmm. which I look, still look young. You guys can't see all the gray hair probably. Looks like you could still play. I tried to cover them all up, don't worry. Um, but if Leslie would have came to me with this book idea 20 years ago when I was 22, I wouldn't have been prepared to share a message. I was 22, I was having fun. Before my wife and kids, I was you know, doing what 22 year olds do. But now I'm 42, I'm reading books. We're giving messages to our kids every single night, like sit up, pay attention. Right, Brian? Yeah. <laughs> um, and so when Leslie came to me and said, you know, I have this great idea for a book. Here's the message. Here's what we want to do. I said, this is aligned exactly with what I want to do and want to teach our kids. And so we wrote the book, and there's a legacy, giving back. We're a legacy. We're giving back to Leslie's sons, to my children, to your families and everyone that buys a book. But we wanted to do more. And so Leslie said, you know, we need to do more. And I said, well, I have an idea. How about we give 50% of the proceeds? So whatever the heck we make from this book, we'll give 50% of the proceeds to charity. We won't think about it, we'll just do it, and we, you know, we'll just go out there and do it. That's our contribution. That's us giving back more, and so that's what we're gonna do. And kind of along those lines, what is, would you say, the message that you want your little kids to take away from this book? Number one, believe in yourself, right? There's going to be times where people doubt you. There's going to be times where people say you're not good enough, not big enough, all those different things. You're not smart enough. But believe in yourself, right? As a parent, and I know as a parents you all understand and, and are probably preaching the same thing. If you don't believe in yourself, no one else will. Believe in yourself, number one. If you're willing to work hard for it, if you're determined to achieve it, if you're willing to sacrifice for it, 
good things will absolutely happen for you. It's just going to take some time. Um, and there, there's a bunch of other good messages in here. But, I mean, if you start there, if you start there with the idea, I'm going to believe in myself, I'm going to work hard for it, I think we'll be in a really good place. Absolutely. And my last question, because I know you guys all want to know. What do you think the Eagles are going to do this season, The Brian? Eagles? Well, I do know this. I know we played the Dallas Cowgirl. I mean, what are they called again? I think the, that's right. The Dallas right. Cowboys. I know we played them two times this season. I know we will beat them twice this season. I know that. I, this is what I really, yeah, this is, I guarantee that. Guarantee. I, what is what I really believe about the team? I think when you look on the defense, they've gotten better on the defensive line. You get Jordan Davis. You get Hassan Reddick, two really good players. Um, they got better at the linebacker position. Um, Nicobe Dean, especially in the draft. They got better in the secondary. James Bradbury coming from the Giants. Uh, Tart coming over from the 49ers. Offensively, you got much better with A.J. Brown coming over uh, from the Tennessee Titans. Second year of Devontae Smith, the best player in college football two years ago. Miles Sanders is a really good running back. We all have seen the offensive line just dominate for the last, I don't know, 15 years. Mm -hmm. And now it comes down to Jalen Hurts. That's the big question mark. Can Jalen Hurts be good enough? And I, I was with Jalen about a month ago at, at an at a, uh, event. And I said, Jalen, you know, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm your friend, but I got a question to ask you. How good are you going to be? How did you improve? And he said, B, listen to me. I've worked my butt off this offseason. I've done everything that I possibly can do to become the quarterback that this franchise is looking for. He said, I'm going to be ready. And when that young man looked me in my eye and told me that, I believed him. So when we talk about the upgrades everywhere else and a young quarterback that has improved, and last thing I'll say about Jalen, I think this is important. Throughout his career, he, has, he hasn't had the same offensive system, same offensive coordinator for two years in a row in the, probably the last five or six years of his career. We all know that continuity and practice, learning the system and getting better at that system certainly is helpful. This is his first year in the last six or seven years that he's had that. I think he'll be much better this year than he's been the last couple of years. And every time I hear you talk, I just think, well, they're going to the Super Bowl, right? I mean, <laughs> I get so inspired by what yes. you have to say. Um, I think right now, if we want to open it up to questions. Big, big fan. I appreciate you coming. and appreciate you writing the book. I'm going to read it to my son later. Nice. Uh, I, I guess my question is, what was it like playing for Coach Reed? Did he have any messages, kind of like what the messages in this book for you guys and the team? Well, Coach Reed is mentioned in the book. Mm -hmm. There is a character in the book called Big Red. We should have called him Little Red just to kind of throw people <laughs> off. But we called him Big Red. Um, now, I'll tell you this. Coach Reed has been instrumental in my life, right? I mean, obviously, I have a father and my mother and their great parents. There's no doubt about that. But when you leave your parents and you're becoming a man, right? I got into the league when I was 21. When you're becoming a man, you need guidance on the field and off the field. The one thing that Coach Reed would always tell me was like, listen, you got to be a professional on the field and off the field. So many players are great on the field. Then when it comes to their teammates or off the field, they're just wild animals, right? Coach Reed, that, that wasn't his thing. That sounds like my son. Like always, <laughs> as soon as I start doing something on the phone for a meeting, it's like I'm yelling and screaming. Um, and my son is five, so that's a different story. Um, Coach, Coach Reed was a great man. A quick story about Coach Reed. Obviously, um, he's been a great mentor to me. But this is the type of man he is off the field. So obviously, his son had a tragic, uh, you know, he passed away tragically at training camp. I go to, this is after I retired, I go to Coach Reed's son's funeral, and I'm, I'm down in the dumps, I watch these kids grow. Um, and so I, I go up to Coach Reed, he's standing beside the casket, and I only wanna just console him and say, Coach, how you doing? I say, Coach, how you doing? Before I could even get that out of my mouth, he said, Brian, what's going on with you? How are you doing? How can I help you? Now remember, this is at his son's funeral, and I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm broken up. And this man that's standing beside the casket of his son, is only concerned about his players, only concerned about what, his, what he can do to help his players. That's the type of man Coach Reed is. That's why when you hear players talk about Andy Reed and father figure and love, that, that's the type of guy that he is. That's why they love him. About that thing on the, um, where you we were talking about earlier, yeah. like when you said that, did you mean like be yourself and 
Like be yourself. What else? Be myself and what else? Tell me more. Like be yourself and do what you want to do and yeah, and don't let anyone get in your way of doing it. What's your name, man? John Luca. John Luca. You got it. That's right. Be yourself. Do the things that you are passionate about, right? Understand what that is and then just go work hard at it. Do everything that you can to learn about that subject and just go after it, right? I talk to my kids all the time and nine, five, and three, Bria, Brian, and Brielle, and I promise you, just like all the other parents here, they don't listen to me, but I have so many good messages to tell them. I'm going to write it down, but we have to do another book series so we can, I can just put these messages in a yes. book and, and let them read the book later, but yeah, believe in yourself, understanding where you want to go, what you want to do, and if you can do that, then you'll be so much happier when you get my age. Long, long time for you. Good afternoon. Both of you, I watch you on Channel 3. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mr. Westbrook. My name is Ruth Telsick. You are the man. Thank you. I mm -hmm. watch TV on my free time when I'm free. I was inspired because I'm an Eagles fan, yay. However, <laughs> you are co-owner of a home health care agency. Yeah. I am a retired nurse aide. I'm always impressed when I see your commercials. Thank you. And I'm not a child anymore, but I am a senior who has a voice. And I have something for you later on after the show. Thank you. But I am so excited to see African American athletes come out into the community because not just African American athletes, but athletes, period, come out and show these young children that you have an opportunity to make it. Right. You have an opportunity to speak your voice. You have an opportunity to do any and everything you want. Yes. And I thank you so much. Th thank you very much. You know, thank you very much. We, we talk about the legacy piece, and Leslie and I discuss this all the time. Um, and we talk about giving back. We talk about teaching our young people. We also talk about changing the community. How do, how do we change things? Well, we give them opportunities to read the right things, to do the right things, but we, we again, we give the money so that we can help them. Yeah. Leslie is a big part of that. I'm a big part of that. This is what we stand for, right? This, this is nothing about publicizing. Le Leslie is a star. There's no doubt about that. I did okay with my career. This is about Just, helping, helping others, yeah. and that's what we're all yeah. about. Start with these guys. Young man, hold on, who's, who's Jersey? Who, Stand up. <laughs> Who's turn around? Let me see this. Turn around. Who is this? Oh my oh. goodness. Carson Wentz. No, no, no. Don't worry about it. Go ahead. Turn back around. I'll pretend that's number 36. Don't worry. Well, can, can we edit this and we just put number 36 Some tape, in there? Maybe. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, what is your favorite thing about football? That's a really good question. Oh my goodness. I have so many favorite things about football. Um, the one of my favorite things about football is it's an opportunity for you to see yourself changing, right? So, so many times in life you do things and you don't see the results. But in football, sports, you can see the results. If you don't work hard, just like at school, if you don't work hard at school, you don't study, you don't do your homework, what happens? You get bad grades, right? Football is the same way. If you don't work hard at football, if you don't study your plays, you don't eat right, you don't get your sleep, you don't lift weights, you absolutely will be terrible, you'll be bad. But if you work hard, you study your plays, you do what your coach asks you, you listen, which my son was still here, you listen, then you can be really good. And you can see yourself changing. You can see yourself getting better. It's that instant gratification for me that, that, that I, I always like. Last but not least, I like making people look bad. I like scoring <laughs> touchdowns, right? So when I can make somebody miss, and then score a touchdown, that feels good in my heart. That was really important for me as well. Oh my goodness, not another, another one. one. This, is Carson Wentz outside giving out jerseys? <laughs> what was What's it your like name? Alex. Alex, nice to meet you. What was it like playing with Deshaun ja Jan Jackson? Deshaun Jackson. Um, I thought you almost said LeBron James. I, 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 so when my son was younger, I used, I used to play these games. I used to tell him I used to play basketball with LeBron James all the time. And so he's, I'm glad he left. He still doesn't know that that's not true. Um, Deshaun Jackson, when you talk about talent, just pure talent, 
When he came into the league, I was on the backside of my career, close to the end, and I saw speed, one of the fastest guys that I've ever played with. I saw a love for the game. I saw a guy that worked really, really hard. And throughout his career, he just got better and better and better. Deshaun Jackson was a, a, a thrill to play with. He was great to be around. I know his family very well, knew his dad before he passed away, know his mom very well. Just a great person. Um, I, I, really, I, I really love Le, Le Deshaun Jackson, one of, my, one of my good friends, one of the guys, one of my favorite guys. Um, what was your favorite like training when you were playing football? The way that I trained? Yeah. Um, eating? Today. No, no. I, um, <laughs> I love eating. That's why I'm chubby now. Um, you know, so the, the, the great part about football is that you get to work on your game. I was talking to Villanova students yesterday, student athletes from the football team, and I said, right now you, got an, you have an opportunity to write your book, to rewrite your book every single year. You have an opportunity to go out there and work hard every single day. Now, when I was in my prime and I was healthy and young, my focus every single day was to get better at one thing per day. And let's say I didn't get better at that one thing, I would just carry that over to the next day, right? So I remember the first day that I started this, I said, I want to go hard every single day, every single play in practice. That means no jogging, that's no means no kind of lollygagging, that means I'm going hard, running fast every single play. And what I found over the course of that season is that the harder you go in practice, it becomes a habit. Just like when you're studying your school books, right? The more that you focus in on math and reading and all these different things, then the tests become easy. So for me, I went really, really hard in practice, and then the game time, I was like, oh, this is easy. I get to embarrass people and get paid to do that and score touchdowns. So, I mean, football and school, and I know, Leslie, you tell your, your, your boys this, Sports in school is very, very similar. And when you go hard and work hard in sports and lifting weights and stuff like that, you usually get better at, at your sport. If you do the same thing at school, you'll get much, much better at school too. And if you don't have this, you know this thing up here? Everyone, does anyone know what this is up here? Your brain, right? See, they can't take that away from you, right? These knees, you can't see them. They don't move very well anymore. These angles don't work. And I can't go play football again. But the stuff that I learned at Villanova and DeMatha Catholic High School, they can never take that away from me. So make sure you exercise your mind. Keep learning, always learning. I'm 42 years old, I'm learning every day. Always learning. If you keep doing that, then at the end you'll be like, oh my goodness, I'm one of the smartest people in the world. <laughs> Brian, you've had an outstanding career. You've had some fascinating plays. What is your most favorite play? My, my favorite play? I have a few. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you a quick funny one. It was, it was not funny to me at the time. So my rookie year, we go down to Baltimore to play the Ravens. I don't think I've even told this story before. <laughs> we go to Baltimore to play the Ravens. I'm, my rookie year, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I don't know the plays. I don't know anything. I just know if I touch the ball, I'll try to score. That's all I know. And so during the week, they said, okay, this is what we're going to do. Brian, the offensive line is going to block the defensive line. You're going to go block Ray Lewis. <laughs> At the time, Ray Lewis was the biggest, baddest, scariest linebacker in the NFL. And so I, I, I was like, uh, <laughs> Coach, quick question. How am I supposed to do that? I said, nobody blocks Ray Lewis. He said, all you got to do is do this, which was not true. It was not easy to do at all. So go to the game, and I'm just nervous. I'm going crazy. And I get to play when I'm like, okay, I have to block Ray Lewis. Here he comes. And I cut him. So I took his legs out, right? Now, which is taboo. It's like one of those unwritten rules in the preseason. You don't want to take anyone's legs out because you, you don't want to hurt anybody, even though they're the other team. So I take his legs out, and I pop up, and I'm just smiling from ear to ear, proud of myself. I got over one of my fears. And next thing I know, I feel my, my head twisting like this. Ray had grabbed the little hole in my helmet and spun my head around. It was like, you don't tackle me. You don't, you don't block me like that in the preseason. So he's yelling, and I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm scared. So I don't know that that was one of my favorite. That was one of the scariest moments of my career. Um, my favorite play, I have two of them. One was the punt return in 2003, maybe 2004, in the Meadowlands. And so there were three miracles of the Meadowlands. One was Herm Edwards long ago before all of you were born all the youngsters were born. 
even before me, I think. I don't know. Maybe I was born. Um, the second was my play, and this is what happened. So we were playing up in, in New York, and we were pretty evenly matched that game. Our offense didn't do anything. We didn't do very well at all. I didn't run the ball good. Donovan didn't throw the ball good. Offensive line was terrible. The receivers, we were all bad. And so we were losing 10 to 6, I believe, and it was about a minute and 30 seconds left in the game or so. And so at this point, I'm like, all right, I'm returning punts. Just try to get the ball to the 50-yard line. Maybe we can get a field goal out of it or something. And so the ball bounces on the ground. I pick it up, and I'm like, uh-oh, I got a chance. Ike Reese, one of my good friends, blocks his guy in the back, which is illegal. They didn't throw the flag. Blocks his guy in the back. And then I just, it's almost like everybody did their job. Everybody did the right thing. And I run down the sideline, and we end up winning the game. But, but to me, that wasn't, that wasn't the biggest part of that. So after that, we talk about inspiring others. And when I listen to Leslie, she inspires me to be a better dad, be a better parent, and certainly for this book. But this game, that game, after that game, we won six or seven games in a row. So just that one play where everybody did their job. I, I scored a touchdown. That was my job. The other guys were supposed to block. They did their job. And we ended up winning that game. But it inspired our team to win six or seven games in a row. That was one of my, my, my favorite plays. And then the last one, this was just a personal thing. So Villanova's rival um, in college football is Delaware. So we were playing in San Francisco, and I got the handoff, and we were just better. And I was, I was good at this point. I was fast. And I was running down the sideline, and then it was a, a safety named Mike Adams. He went to Delaware, and he was the only one that was going to catch me. And so he came up to me, and I... I punched him so hard in his face. I, I stiff-armed him in his face, ran for 71 yards for a touchdown, and that was kind of a take-that type of Delaware moment for me. So I was, I've always remembered that. Hi. Um, and I just wanted to know if there was anything like a mentor or any teacher ever said to you or any advice anything that you would give to a teacher um, to be able to inspire um, our students. And also, go Eagles. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, I, I had so many mentors that helped me along the way. Um, my parents are my first role models, and they're still uh, my role models. My, 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 my mom is still my boss. My, I have two bosses. One's <laughs> over here, my wife. Um, and my, my, my real, real boss is my mom. She's still bossing me around at 42 years old. I'm, I'm trying to think of something. One of my teachers now, you're testing my memory, and it's not mm -hmm. very good from 30 years ago. But... One of the things that my old basketball coach, Morgan Wooten, who actually is the winningest high school coach, he's won the most games in high school history, he said to me when I was just a little kid, a little young boy, and this is kind of something that we, we talk about in the story just a little bit, um, it's not the size of the dog in a fight, it's the size of fighting the dog, right? And, and that actually is probably a size thing, but when you think a little bit deeper in the message that we're talking about here is how much do you want it, right? How bad do you want it? How much heart do you have to change your situation? Um, what are the things that you're willing to do to make sure that you're successful? So many of us, including myself at times, I'm like, okay, I want to be successful. What can someone else help me do so that I can be successful? The question shouldn't be that. The question should be, what are you willing to do to help yourself become successful? Mm -hmm. What are you willing to change to make sure that you can ensure that you're successful? Now, as parents, we always are like, okay, well, how do we make our kids successful? What can we say and do to our kids to make them successful? Brian, sit up. <laughs> um, and the other part of that question is, what can I do to make myself successful? That, that's one of the things that's super important to us. Uh, you know what, I, 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 Mr. Tom. Yes, would you please stand up? Yes, Mr. Tom. Who's responsible for these beautiful drawings? <laughs> These kids of his own. So a, a big part of these children books, obviously some of our kids can't read, is the drawings, the pictures. And it makes it. It, it makes a big difference. And so when, when, when we wanted this book, the words to speak volumes, but when you look at some of these pictures that Mr. Tom did for us, they speak volumes. They, yeah. they really and truly speak to the message of this book and the people that we are. Mr. Tom, go ahead. Yeah, if you could just talk about your process of writing this and 
drawing, oh, I, making the words come to life. I, I, I thought you guys were messing with me. <laughs> <laughs> you guys emailed me and said, do you know who Brian Westbrook is? I mean, I was sitting there in my, Kel my Kelsey jersey you know, <laughs> on the phone. Yeah, I know who Brian is. Um, I, just reading the story was, I mean, my inspiration. Yeah. I mean, I, I like drawing animals. So when you're like, it's Brian Westbrook, I was like, oh, uh, mm -hmm. drawing people, huh? But he's a mouse. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, just reading the story, I mean, really, the images just came to me as I read them. You guys set me up. I just put them on paper. Perfect. Well, we looked at a lot of drawings, and you just got it. Like, yes. we saw it, and we're like, oh, this is it, for sure. So thank you for making these words come to life so yes. much. Thank you, Mr. Tom. I, I see my good friend Devon Gibbons, one of my best friends in the world. He's on 97.5 in the evenings. He does pregame, postgame, does everything for basketball. Um, when, when you talk about a support system, obviously I have my family, my wife, and my kids. But my brother, Devon Gibbons, I appreciate you. Thank you very much, man. No, thank you for having me. And um, of course, I wouldn't miss this with you being here and you and Leslie and seeing your wife and the kids here and seeing this great turnout today and support of the book, which is really cool. And, you know, I'll make sure, you know, my kids support and all of that. So I just wanted to make sure I stopped by and showed up, of course. Devon has three beautiful girls. They, they, they're they old. They, they can read the book, but they're, <laughs> yeah. they're a little bit older. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, eventually they'll, they'll figure it all out. No doubt. Yeah. Thank you, brother. You got Appreciate it. it. You, you know, Leslie, one of the things that you always talked about when, you, when you, we were talking about the book was turning your strengths, your weaknesses, what people considered your weakness yeah, some may to perceive. your strength. Yes, yes, exactly. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, you know, a lot of people think like, oh, well, you're too small, but then what if you, yes, yeah, okay, sometimes maybe you're smaller. Like my kids, they want to play football, they're not that big. But what if you turn that, like Brian did, into your strength? And so it's not a weakness. It really isn't at all. It's just something you get through and make it your strength and own it. And I hope a lot of kids out there, I'm sure, have gone on teams and thought, I can't do this. But yeah, you can, it's following Brian's strategy, of course. You know, there, there, it's like in basketball, right? Everybody wants to be the best scorer, the highest scorer, right? And maybe that's not your strong shoot. Maybe you can't score. But maybe you're Dennis Rodman, and I'm not talking about dressing up in the dress, but Dennis Rodman, the, the <laughs> best rebounder. Maybe you're that guy. Maybe you're the best passer. Maybe you can get great assists like John Stockton and some of the best point guards. And, and maybe you're Allen Iverson. Maybe one of the best scorers that Philadelphia has ever had. Maybe you're that. Make some of the things that people perceive as your weakness your strength. By the way, real quick, he's very good at basketball, too. Oh. Or not. Yes, <laughs> yes. <Long> ago. <laughs> um, I think we have time for one more question. Sure. Tell us your name. What's your name? Jake. Gabe? Jake. Jake. What's up, Jake? What, how old are you, man? Five. Five. You're tall. Yeah. What great. What, so are you in kindergarten, pre-K? Kindergarten. Yeah? yeah? Let me hear you. Somebody yes? Yeah. You got a question for me? Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> so um, I'll have two, uh, two quick questions for you. So I have two boys. They both play football. Um, any advice you have for little kids getting started in football, something they should do, something that they should work at? The advice that I, I would tell you, I would tell my kids the same thing. Have fun. Mm. Um, we, we don't make NFL players when they're five and six and <laughs> seven years old. I, I, I see it all the time. And... I see the dads, and I see some of the moms like, nope, he needs to go to practice and this and drills. and <laughs> Enjoy yourself. Have fun. Allow your kids to experience as much as they possibly can as young kids, little boys and girls. And because as adults know, things get serious at some point. And every time I look at my pay stub, I keep seeing that, that Uncle Sam popping up again, and that changes things. And just enjoy yourself. Mm -hmm. Have fun. Take it as serious as you want, but to make sure that you have fun. Win, lose, or draw, right? Enjoy yourself. Great advice. And thank you guys so much for coming out today. Thank we you, appreciate guys. Thank you. you.